I want to show you one more neat little trick. As I already said, with the Elma Labs EVC2SX, we can also increase the GPU voltage using a voltage offset. Now, as it turns out, when you increase the GPU voltage, you also increase the GPU frequency. We can use this trick to get our 6500 XT graphics card all the way up to 3 GHz. The Elma Labs EVC2SX is the latest addition to the EVC2 product line. The Elma Labs EVC2 enables digital or analog control using I2C, SMBus, or PMBus. The device also has UART and SPI functionality. It can be considered the foundation for the Elma Labs ecosystem as you can expand the functionality of some Elma Labs products by connecting it to an EVC2. In this case, we're interested in the two I2C headers that provide digital voltage control. I'll try to keep the step-by-step -step explanation as practical as possible in this video. Step one, identify the voltage controllers you want to control with the EVC2SX. Step two, determine how the hardware modification will work. On this graphics card, I will do one hardware modification. This modification adds an I2C pin header on the graphics card PCB, allowing us to communicate with the onboard ON semiconductor NCP81022 digital voltage controllers. We can then connect the EVC2SX device to the I2C pins and easily control the behavior of the voltage controllers. I focus exclusively on the GPU voltage controller because that's where I obtain the only tangible performance benefit. When we open the ON semiconductor NCP81022 datasheet, we find much information about the voltage controller. Under the SVI2 interface register map, we can find more information on the various settings for this voltage controller. The most suitable options for us are the special purpose offset, which we can use to offset the GPU and SOC voltage, load line, which lets us adjust the voltage load line, and ADC disable. It's that last one that will give us the most benefit. ADC is short for analog to digital converter and does exactly what the name says. Translate analog electrical signals into digital signals, mainly for data processing purposes. In the NCP81022 diagram, the ADC sits between the SVI2 interface and the multiplexer. SVI stands for Serial VID Interface and is AMD's standard for communication between the VRM controller and the CPU or GPU. A multiplexer or data selector is an electrical device that selects between several analog or digital input signals and forwards the selected input to a single output line. The GPU sends VID commands for the GPU voltage to the voltage controller via the SVI2 interface. The controller then uses a DAC or digital to analog converter to set the voltage. Via the multiplexer, six analog inputs feed back information to the GPU. The ADC first converts these analog signals to digital information, which is then stored in the controller registers. The GPU will then read those registers back via the SVI2 interface and adjust voltage requests accordingly. The reported information via the ADC includes sensed GPU and SOC voltage, maximum capable GPU and SOC current, and slew rate for GPU and SOC voltage. By disabling the ADC, we essentially force the voltage controller to stop updating those registers. In fact, the information available in those registers would be the last updated ones. If we disable ADC when the GPU is in idle, those values will be very low. Again, we don't know how the SMU interacts with the voltage controller, but as a practical result of disabling ADC, we can use a lot more power. Also, the maximum voltage is no longer limited to the Vmax of 1.2 volt. In Firmark, the power draw on the six pin connector measured with the Elmo Labs PMD doubles from about 75 watt to 150 watt. Also, the maximum voltage increases from 1.2 volt to 1.26 volt. Step three, ensure the EVC2SX supports the I2C device. You can refer to the EVC2 beta software forum topic for a complete list of the supported I2C devices. If your device is not listed, you can leave a message in the forum or Discord. On the EVC2SX, each I2C header has three pins. SCL, SDA, and GND. 
That stands for serial clock, serial data, and ground. It's essential to connect the pins on the EVC2 to the correct pins on the graphics card. Connect the various pins to the relevant points on your graphics card. Since there are only three pins, it should be straightforward. If you're unsure, use a digital multimeter to locate the ground pin on both the graphics card and the EVC2 I2C header. The data pin is always in the middle and the other pin is the clock. Step six, open the Elma Labs EVC2 software for voltage monitoring and control. You can find the relevant controls under the I2C submenu items. First, click Find Devices. That will check if any supported devices are present on the I2C bus. In our case, it will find two NCP8102 voltage controllers. One controller manages the GPU and SOC voltage, and the other handles the memory controller and memory voltage. We select the top voltage controller in the menu and immediately enable the monitoring function. If the I2C is connected well, you should now see the charts update. Now you can check if this controller indeed manages the GPU voltage. You can see the loop one output voltage jumps between 0.01 volt and 0.719 volt. Then you can configure the voltage controller using the drop down menus. In our case, we simply change ADC setting from yes to no. After applying the changes, you should now see the monitoring charts flatline. You can change other settings as well. Remember that the loop one options control the GPU voltage and loop two settings control the SOC voltage. With ADC disabled, our maximum voltage for the highest frequency is about 1.26 volt. As we increase the voltage offset with the EVC2, we can increase the effective voltage. The maximum reported frequency increases from 2,973 megahertz at 1.16 volt to 2,996 megahertz at 1.36 volt. By playing with the undervolt option in the GPU driver and the voltage offset function of the voltage controller, we can increase the GPU voltage to 1.375 volt. With this voltage, we see a maximum GPU frequency of 3002 MHz reported in hardware info. I also ran 3DMark time spy to check the performance and as you can see, it is possible to run 3DMark near 3 GHz with the Radeon RX 6500 XT. Unfortunately, again, I cannot really give you a technical reason for why that happens. I suspect it's related to either the clock stretching circuit or the AVFS technology, which adjusts the frequency dynamically based on the voltage present. So maybe when you V-droop below and the frequency drop below, if you force the voltage higher, the frequency goes higher as well. But that's just pure speculation on my side, so please don't take my word for it.